Well, hello there, and welcome back to the Marauders Map. In this week's episode, we're going to be talking about the different companies that Niantic has actually acquired in the process, um, of, well, in between announcing Wizards Unite and this point, because there's been some pretty cool developments in that front, and then talking about how they might be used in the game itself when it finally comes out, which... Um, we, we talked about it in another video, so it might be in the spring of next year, not necessarily later this year, but as long as they're working on it and they're using these companies and these acquisitions to their advantage, then I'm all for it, honestly. Um, the longer we have to wait for a game that's perfect is less time we have to spend complaining about a game that has a bunch of issues, you know? So I, I, I'm for it as much as I want to play it as soon as possible. But let's dive into these companies that Niantic has taken over. So on February 1st, Niantic acquired Escher Reality, which is an AR technology company. And in this blog post from February 1st, it talks about what Niantic is planning on doing with their technology. So it says here, the addition of the Escher AR technology is incredibly exciting to us at Niantic as it significantly accelerates our work on persistent shared AR as part of the Niantic real world application platform. It is our intention to make our cross-platform AR technology technology available more widely to developers later this year. So that's really cool. I think with this acquisition, Niantic is trying to make it easier for developers to use AR in their applications and just in, in daily life. Um, so that's, that's really cool that Niantic is taking the initiative to make it more widely accessible. So the second company that Niantic acquired was Matrix Mill, uh, and this was on June 28th, so it was pretty recent, uh, about 10 days ago, 11 days ago. And they're a London-based company. Uh, they're technically an AR company, I guess, but Niantic really wants to make use of their technology, their specific technology that browses the world around you and then lets you be able to put in digital objects or images behind real world images. So they kind of work a lot more hand in hand, which is really important for AR, I think. And it says here, the Matrix Mill team comes from University College London, where they have spent years building and perfecting deep neural networks that can infer information about the surrounding world from one or more cameras. So that's kind of like a general description of AR, pretty much. And this technology redefines how machines see and understand the 3D world, and more importantly, how digital objects can interact with the real elements of it, which is a really cool thing that Niantic posted a video of, and we'll go over that as well later on. At Niantic, we frequently talk about how in order to augment reality, you need to be able to understand it. The Matrix Mill team has come up with novel ideas that push the boundaries of what machines can process, thinking around occlusions and seeing the world closer to the way human eyes can. As a result of this hard work, AR experiences can feel more natural to the eye, which is a goal we have squarely in our sights, which is really cool. So they're really trying to bring in the immersive element and that'll be really important for Wizards Unite. Okay, and that same day, Niantic actually posted all over social media. Um, they actually created a new Twitter, which is for their engineering department at Niantic. So I think that would be a cool thing to follow their process with their research and development of new AR technology. But the important thing is the videos that they've actually released in addition to these blog posts. So let's take a look at those. In this paragraph of the blog that they posted, it talks about understanding reality. So it says, advanced AR requires an understanding of not just how the world looks, but also what it means, what objects are present in a given space, what those objects are doing, and how they are related to each other, if at all. The Niantic Real World Platform, which is what they're calling it, is building towards a contextual computer vision where AR objects understand and interact with real world objects in unique ways, stopping in front of them, running past them, or maybe even jumping into them. And they, they posted a, a, a really cool animation of how AR technology has developed and is so intelligent now. And it says, uh, uh, we illustrate how our computer vision algorithm identifies objects and concludes what they are with a quantifiable confidence score. So you can see that those are probably percentages. So it says like 92.9%, it's probably a table, 98.3%, it's definitely 
definitely a chair, 99.3% um, of TV. So it really analyzes all these objects and it can place digital things on or behind or under these real life objects, which is really, really cool. Uh, ultimately, this allows those objects to be added to an AR vocabulary. The larger the vocabulary, the more understanding we have and the richer AR on our real world platform can be. So they're really working hard in the AR world. And I think that Niantic is probably the number one leaders in augmented reality development. Now this one in particular is especially important for Wizards Unite and I, Pretty sure you can tell why in the demo. So it says multiplayer gameplay requires the components of Niantic's real world platform to work in concert across multiple users. And when you add more people and several varying perspectives, these components must work in specific ways in order to create a visually compelling shared experience. In our research, we found that one of the biggest obstacles is latency. It's nearly impossible to create a shared reality experience if the timing isn't perfect. So they've worked on creating this like uniform solution and just getting that low latency, meaning there isn't much lag or, you know, you're, it's, it's all very smooth and simultaneous and you're actually able to do this. So they posted a video and it's called Codename Neon. And in the video, you can see people like fighting against each other with these orbs of light. It, it really does look like a PvP scenario within Wizards Unite. You know, it, it looks like they're casting spells at each other, even though that's not at all what they're doing. They're just catching these orbs of light and throwing them. But it's it looks like a spell, really. And they're, they're all playing against each other, and you can see everyone um, in your camera, in your AR experience, while also like they, they have a name tag and you know, there's all these different elements on screen. And it's really cool to see how far AR technology has come even in the last two years since Pokemon Go was announced. And they also shared a clip of this game called Tonehenge where you have to pretty much solve puzzles. But the cool thing about this one is that when you look at the other players on your screen, you're seeing them as these cloaked figures with masks and it's a really cool thing what they can do to actual objects in the real world but you're the only one seeing them on your phone so they are definitely making advances in the AR world and it's very exciting to see what this actually means for Wizards Unite. And at the end it says, while we are using this technology first for games, so that's pretty much saying that you know they're definitely coming to Pokemon Go and to Wizards Unite and any future AR games that they may develop, it says it is clear that it will be relevant to many kinds of applications in the future. So what could this mean for just general tasks? Like for example, in Apple's iOS 12, there's an app called Measure where you just use your camera and you select from end to end and it tells you exactly how long it is. So just like little things like that where you could just literally use your phone for everything pretty much and you don't really need any other tools and that's really cool. Hopefully they can figure out something to remedy the battery situation so that it doesn't waste as much battery on our phones. But I'm really excited to see where AR is going. It's, it's fascinating to me how far technology has come even in the last 10 years. Like 2007 is when the iPhone was announced. Before that, we didn't have any of this technology and it's, it's crazy. So let me know down below in the comments how you think this will be implemented into Wizards Unite or maybe a future AR game. Um, and do you think that Wizards Unite will benefit from these or do you think it's not really related? Just let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much this week's video and we'll see you next week. So for now, mischief managed.